Ladies and gentlemen, welcome here to the ESL studios for week 11 of the WGL EU season 2 for 2015 and 2016. A warm hello to you, of course, here from our Cologne studios and to the rest of the North Rhine here in Germany. Hopefully you survived carnival and recovering fairly well. We barely made it through, Oliver. We're still here in one piece. That says a lot. How are you feeling, mate? Of course, we had a massive, massive super week just behind us now and uh, off the back of that, definitely some interesting results. Yeah, it was one hell of a week last week. My voice is a little bit screwed up still from maybe a combination of super week plus the uh, carnival celebrations, mm -hmm. which is obviously um, was a good time, but I um, I mean, yeah, Super Week's uh, done and dusted. We've had two this season so far. They've both been fantastic. And now we're just into our last match uh, match week of the regular season. Yeah, and so obviously we have been talking a lot throughout, this, throughout the season, of course, about how things are going to shape up towards the end of the season. And we do have an interesting situation now that we'll get onto a little bit later. But do bear in mind that tonight is actually very, very important in the overall placing of teams towards the end part of the season. So you all should be watching these games very, very carefully. Of course, as usual, we are joined by the lovely Melly down the end there. How are we tonight? Awesome. I mean, kind of sad as season is coming to an end, but really looking forward to those playoffs on, uh, on the weekend and, of course, uh, on the finals, which are happening in our studio. So we're allowed to say that now. Yeah. And people, if you ha have, haven't read the news, head over to facebook.com slash WGLU over, uh, or over at eu.wgleague.net. Um, or wallofTanks.eu to find all information regarding the finals and hopefully soon all um, teams that are going to play, actually. But we'll sort that out this week, hopefully. Yeah, and I'm and really, really excited. And this weekend, of course, as well, yep. which is where our pre-playoff stage will actually decide uh, the teams that do get through to the finals because not everyone, of course, can play here at our studios, unfortunately. Quickly, Manny, before we go ahead, it's time for... I would for totally invite them all, if would, you yeah, ask well, me. I don't I know if totally we have enough room for all of them, to be honest, <laughs> but seven-man teams can uh, fill up a lot of space, of I miss the days when we used to have... Uh, what, we had six teams at yes. one point going towards the finals and we used to go all over the place. Those yep. were the days that were good times, but it's just four teams, two teams um, qualify this week. So Monday, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, today and Thursday, yep. we'll know two teams on the weekend. Of course, we'll know one on Saturday and one on Sunday. Pretty straightforward stuff here. That means, though, that, of course, the teams had to fight through an online phase to even get to the finals, which for teams like Kazda Crew, if you uh, are familiar with the league, can be a bit of a tough challenge. But I wanted to do, I wanted to do this, Melly. Uh, before we go ahead, it's time for your food report. What have you got in the corner? What are you eating tonight? I'd love to know. I'm sure get everyone else home does too. An apple? Yep. An orange? Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe. Right, so she starts healthy. You wait because, for it now. Because, no lemon, um, unfortunately, Mel uh, Mitch. No, like, yeah, lemon. Oh, my God. Don't get me started on that. But I'm allergic to oranges, so I won't be eating the whole one. Salad? What? And, well, don't yeah. eat it at all. Don't eat it at all. But it's Anaphylactic so shock on this show. And cookies. But I only <clears> ate one, and I'm not going to eat more. So, right. so the show because has... summer is coming. The show has top kicks. Melly has doppel kicks. So <laughs> we've got all the kind of kicks that you need here, guys. All right. So before we get too far ahead, of course, last week, um, we don't want to... Confused people wasn't actually a super week. It was only two matches, uh, two oh, sorry, match yeah, days sorry. last week, yeah, right? Yeah, so we did have a bit of a break before this one. It allowed us to catch our breath yep. a little bit before we got into the last few weeks. So let's have a look at the recap of Thursday's matches. I wish there were some very, very impactful ones and definitely a good way to get up to speed before we jump in tonight. the WGL EU Season 2 for 2015 and 2016. This is the ladder here for you guys. You can see it there. Of course, it is Oops uh, chilling up the top still, but only by a hair, Oliver Maxfield, Tornado Rocks, and the team that actually received a push from Synergy. This time, they actually have to make one. The cap started. They're going to go all together, though, as well. We'll switch them in a second. You can see that they have set themselves up here towards the middle. They're going to roll out as a crew. Persister, though, tracked up immediately there. Not a good start. The E100 not actually connecting the shot there. Dreamlike, unfortunately, making a mess of that one. The Panatra receives a shot in towards the side. It's an autoloader, I think, firing at him. Yep, Cresswick's having a go. Gets his uh, third. So two out of three is not bad from him. And Synergy doing some damage, so enough anyway. I can't do a lot, actually. Yeah, he's got a hull over. That's a bit risky. He's committed to this one now. Braddy really in the mix here. He's just trying to make sure Grosser can't poke, poke over and get any resets. That's quite smart, actually. Maybe they'll be able to hold this one off. You can see Grosser looking for some reset, but he can't get it. The cap is about to be completed. Oops! No! They just stay in it. Just get the, uh, 
the reset, the last moment. Look at the 2 1 10 E5s. Look how far forward they push. And look how much health hoops have given up to just get the reset. KB really putting their nose to the grindstone. And they can't get the second reset here. No one's going in. Silent tried to go across it. Saying does manage to do it, but it still doesn't matter. KB get the match, get the re don't get the reset. And uh, Utopia, they're trying to play for time, I think. A little shot, traded damage across. Vice line getting up there as well. The bounce off the multi show. God, that's not good news. Wicked is going to fall here as well. And I don't think Utopia have the, the tanks to keep this up. They're not going to go for a cap though. Looks like they want to get the cleanup. You can see Diabol is absconded towards the north though. He's got been, he's been found. What on earth is going on here? Vorsic just waiting for the chance to do some more damage and suddenly a lot more coming through. Bishop is absolutely pinned in. Nowhere to run. Yeah, that's really bad play by Bishop. I mean, the FPT 15 b a great tank in many ways, but we have seen so many great players being caught out by the fight by the fact they get double track they get perma track they can't do anything about it and they get taken down because that's obvious obviously the, the back of that tank is where the turret is so bad news for one batch right now how the hell are, uh, are one bats letting tornado rocks into this game i do not understand it coca-cola getting picked apart fc dynamo finds it and suddenly tornado rocks remember how to play the attack inside they're taking damage but they have every tank still standing a pretty good job in this game so far but still the numbers are in clear favor and just the angles strong CMO can hold are really good. Formula One finds the first one and out of range, hang on by a thread. This, this can't happen, surely not. Carol has so few options here. They have to work in perfect synergy with this land, the perfect shots, take the perfect amount of damage and not allow us to fall to pieces, but already starting to trade out a little bit here. Formula going to try and go into this one, but just going a little bit low here. Shell does come out and suddenly, we're in a 2v3, but look who's got the shells and where they're available. Formula has three to make. Everyone else is pretty well set here. Kirov is on reload. He's going to have to wait this one out. No, why did Formula come off the hill? What? He's, he's, he's trying to chase. He's trying to chase catch. He's just going to get killed by Hunter Zord now. This is terrible play from Formula 1. Can he hit the clutch shot? Yes, he can. He got the reload. He found the kill. And that's kept out of range in this game. 654, two versus two. Some careless play from Strong Siemer may have just caused them this game, though getting spotted. Damage from Catch coming in. First shell doesn't hit for the second one. The Formula 1 will be able to fight, and that's going to put it in a two versus one situation. And the object what? 140 misses the shell. The new player from Strong Siemer is absolutely making oh a mare of this God. one. Will he hit the next one? Yes, he will. He keeps his team in this game. He finds a snapshot. And I'm surprised that Batchat didn't manage to get away with that one. Formula 1 trying to run away with his life in his hands. And he's going to have to try and beat Michael Schumacher. There's no chance for the Object 140 to kill Object 140 from the hill because of the gun depression of the Batchat. So he's got to try from a different angle. And uh, he's actually behind a bit of a tree. He's going to go for it, goes for the shot, tries to find it. No, he doesn't care off. Formula 1's got to be careful. He actually misses it. Formula 1 now has an opportunity to shoot him. He's got Five about three seconds. seconds left. Oh, he's got it as well. He hits the shot. Formula 1 on the last couple of seconds. He just needs to stay alive. Nothing more to it. Brilliantly played to the time. And there we go. That Object 140 can just sit and watch as that clock will run out beneath him. And Formula 1. What a, brilliant, what a brilliant bit of play. What a terrible piece of play from the Object 140. And guys, hopefully you have a great time in between then, but make sure you tune back in at the same time in this channel. Some very interesting and exciting games all throughout the week, actually. But, of course, that Thursday night definitely uh, was some interesting results there as well. As you did see there, Strong Siamma had their first chance to get a win. And they're still sitting on the bottom of the ladder there. Ten games and no wins. Let's recap the scores for you guys. At least you can see what happened on that Thursday. And, Oliver, pretty close games all night. Yeah, it was a really good night, actually. Probably one of the better match days we've ever had. Of course, Ding managed to beat Kazza Crew. That was pretty insane. Some real close matches. But uh, Kazza, they tried a lot of weird stuff and they couldn't really put it together successfully. Of course, we had that insane last match between out of range and strong Siemma. No one expected that one to uh, actually go out of range's way considering that uh, strong Siemma in a five versus two situation at the end. And, uh, at the end on cliff, so insane stuff from them. Tornerox, Wombats on tanks. It was going so well. I thought Wombats were the better team in that match until we went on Ruenberg and they managed to lose both the attack and the defense. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, enough to push Tornerox into that 5-3 scoreline. So, Strong Siemer are going to end the season probably with just the one point at this rate. They did have a tiebreaker loss, so they do get a piece of that pie. 
the next game will be up against Tornado Rocks coming up next week. So that way, later this week, sorry. So that is going to be an interesting one. But let's turn our attention, of course, to the table now. Let's see how that was impacted by the games from last week. Tornado Rocks and Ding sitting pretty up the top, of course. Ding with that win against Kasner. That's, you know, it's really starting to show us that maybe Oliver Kasner haven't adapted as well to this new format mm. as we first thought. Yeah, I mean, Kasner had a great season um, up until December. And then they started to lose, like, against Synergy. Um, you know, they had, a they had a very bad half of their season. They haven't really won a game since then. So, yeah, they really need to step it up. I think they'll still be in that top six situation. We'll have to see. Tony Rock's probably automatically qualified at this point. The only team we can really say that for. Ding, of course, we'll see today. And, you know, a lot of the matches, I think by the end of today, you'll at least know one of those top teams, if not maybe even more. I mean, we'll, we'll certainly know where that top yeah. six will stand. I think regardless, Kazda Crew will have probably six positions locked away, even with KV do win. So, yeah, I don't think anyone can actually take that position away from them. But like you said here, we do have a, mm. a big split as well between that 11th, 12th place and, and sort of 10th. So, uh, Penta still actually can leapfrog to 7th today with a decent result. But on that note, let's have a look at today's upcoming matches as well. See what is lying ahead of us here on the first day of match week at number 11, of course. Some very, very big games, Oliver, coming up. Going to be kicking things off with uh, Connect Broad versus Synergy. And that's an important game in itself. Yeah, I mean, KB and Synergy are theoretically still in that top six kind of position. They can get up there. Um, so I think, you know, if, for instance, KB can to get a, get up into the top five position or get the three points or Synergy do, you know, they could actually look at um, a, a pre-playoff position. But super important. I mean, KB was definitely one of those teams we kind of nudged as one of the better new teams. Sure. Um, they've, they've struggled for a bit. But, uh, and, and Synergy have been getting better as, as we've gone through the season. I think, you know, looking at season, the next season at least, um, season one, 2016, 17, then we can say maybe Synergy will be a top contender, but it's going to be a super, super important first game. No doubt about it. And of course, after that, Penta versus Rusty Roster, Wombats on Tanks versus Oops to follow things up. Of course, Oops off the back of losing that game to Connect Abroad, and it wasn't even close. That's the problem there. So just before the end, in fact, just when they could have guaranteed themselves automatic qualification for our finals, mm. they lose a crucial game, currently in third. A win here puts them up to 24 points. We technically uh, put them in that... Uh, that second place spot, but that doesn't guarantee that they're actually going to go to finals or other games to be played this week. One Mats on Tanks played twice this week. That's very important because they've only played nine games. Everyone else has played 10 or 11 in the case of Out of Range. So yeah. they can essentially can actually get to the top of the ladder this week or at least equal first and would be second on uh, on 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 virtue of the fact that they lost to Tornado Rocks just now. So mm. a lot of uh, a lot of theorycraft and being done. Well, DeKilzer even showed us uh, a spreadsheet of what we expected to happen. But let's just turn our heads towards Connect Abroad versus Synergy here. Sixth versus seventh. 16 points versus 15 points. Connect Abroad with two tiebreaker wins put themselves in this little awkward little position, being one point away from Synergy yep. here. But this is still important as well because this is going to decide the uh, that, that fifth place berth potentially. Yeah, I think the fifth place slash sixth place position is really what's going to be interesting. I mean, if, if KB win and then we see some other matches go KB's way, then Kansas Crew could possibly go down to seventh. Yes. And if Synergy win and some more unlikely results happen, also that, that can happen. So, I mean, we've got this kind of like position from fifth down to se uh, seventh, which can all just do the old switch through and things can change up really quickly. And there's one thing that messes Kasner up here. If Synergy and Connect Abroad get into a tiebreaker and Synergy win that one, and then they, Kasner yeah. goes below both of them into, I would say, seventh place beca because they lost against both these teams in the regular season, or at least Synergy in his case. So it depends who they get even with. Everything's up in the air still. We said that all through the season, but now even more to be the case here. So it's going to be a good one here, of course. Ghost Town is going to be starting things off on this match here. Melly, everyone at home, of course, votes will be flooding in here because we have two very close those teams, Absolutely. two teams that really want to be in those finals. Yeah, we already have people voting, so the vote is currently sitting on 69% for Knekebrud. And people, if you haven't voted yet, head over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash WGLEU and get involved. The very first posting on our timeline tells you exactly how to do it. You can simply click on the link or the little team vote button above our timeline. You'll get forward to our team vote app where you simply have to choose your favorite team logo or the team you favor, of course, and then predict the exact scoreline in the little, well, blank section below. And send it off, hope for the best. If you're one of the three fastest for this match, you might win a bonus code. We're giving out three, as of, um, mentioned, of course. Also, follow us on Twitter, because we'll keep you live uh, updated and send you live ticker messages to tell you what's happening if you, you have to leave your computer, which would be really sad, if you ask me. 
Well, I mean, here's the thing, right? Um, the votes coming in as well will be very interesting to see, um, like, I guess, how these games are set up because we have, I think, two of these games are between teams that are adjacent on the ladder, right? Yeah. So we're very, very interested to hear what you guys at home are thinking about these as well when we don't really have a lot of data to go on. These teams haven't played each other yet this season. It's the first time they meet each other. Super interesting stuff. Melly as well, thank you for that. Um, we were requested by Tarantula to run a poll as well. Who's been the hardest red line sniper this season? But I think we know that's Crux and even he admits that Crux will be taking that away. Like 50-50. Yeah, not, yeah, to be fair, <laughs> That's true. In the in the in the um, in the 62A sitting in the corner. Yeah. yeah, we've seen that before. Nonetheless, we're going to jump into this match very very soon here as the players are just preparing themselves to go, and it is an important one as well. Ghost Town between Synergy and KB has been a map that both of these teams have seemed to have a decent understanding of. Ollie. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Ghost Town has definitely been a little bit more popular than I've uh, ever expected, to be honest. I mean, we've seen it almost every single match in the second half of the season. Yeah. Um, I'm super surprised considering that it wasn't the most popular map in, in the previous season in 754. So I think, I mean, at the beginning when Ghost Town was first envisioned, it was like this whole esports map, it's symmetrical. And now I, I feel like that's its main saving grace. That's the reason why the teams are playing it, yes. because it, it's so balanced. And, you know, you can't ever say, oh, there's a defense or an attack, bi attack bias. Um, the in, only bias that's is a bias is, is the only bias that's there is the actual capping zone. It's being virtual, well, by virtue of being on defense, you have exactly. a small advantage, but that's like in any game. Yeah, um, yeah. People were people were ranting a fair bit about the the evenness of that map, so it's good to see teams pick that up and run with it. Maybe even more gaming look to produce more maps just like that. But anyway, let's hear what the teams had to say in the lead up to this match. Of course, plenty on the line for them. Synergy, that's going to be a really interesting match for us. I don't think they are like the best team ever on individual skill level, but they showed a really remarkable ability to adapt our tactics. And yeah, I think this is going to be a really interesting match. Looking forward to beating them. Match with KB will be a very important match for us. I think KB is really hard enemy and we need to prepare correctly. Both teams, so I mean, interesting is something that uh, mm. Hellfish said multiple times. This will be interesting, an interesting game. I'm interested to see how it's going to go. Almost sounds like me, to be honest, <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm trying to find filler words casting. Yeah. Um, by the way, where has Smeaker gone? I haven't seen him play for quite a while. No, he's not in the team anymore. I think he got removed from, from the team uh, under John. So I think he's uh, either a reserve player or has just been fully um, put into the sidelines along with Stalker and right. uh, those kind of players. So, yeah, I mean, that happens in a season. You know, you've got to make some changes depending on how you're feeling and how your team's progressing. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, either way, I mean, I'm sure that a lot of the teams share his sentiments there as well because even at the start of the season, KB were looking pretty strong. But now, of course, it's time to find out just how strong they are when we hit the battlefield. Teams are ready, more or less. Anyway, tanks have been selected, and we'll get the picks ready uh, for you in a moment as we do go into game here, of course. If you just joined us, we've got three matches ahead of us, and still, we'll be back on Thursday for more games. And while we're at it as well, just remind you guys now, Saturday, Sunday night, we'll be here as well with the pre-playoffs. That is not one you want to miss as well. It's going to be have a tournament bracket structure. It's going to decide what team's going to be the finals. Still got two teams to decide outside the top two. So, so much is happening this week. Keep your eyes glued to this channel. But let's jump in now. First game, a lot of FPs for Connect Abroad and for Synergy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be Ghost Town. I think this is probably the most... Uh homogenous kind of map in terms of what tank picks we get. Just uh, FE2 on 5Bs, 50Bs. Um, I mean, to be honest, I think the teams definitely overstate the significance of the FE2 on 5B. I think it's actually a lot weaker than it's uh, um, played out to be. Just because I think the players, oh, you know, we were really good with that tank. But more often than not, they aren't, you know, <laughs> they aren't always as good as they think they are yeah. in terms of you know, getting caught out in a situation you can never expect and getting tracked, not being able to repair and getting taken down very quickly. And that's, you know, a problem we all have in that FE. Uh, but yeah, pretty similar from both teams, of course. The defensive side is going to be taken up by Synergy in the attack by KB not wasting any time to get in that northern cap. 
Yeah, he's definitely snuck himself up there and starting this off fairly quickly. So this might require synergy quickly to get in position. They're going to move as a team as well, but Kanekoprob will be waiting as a team as well. Everyone spots each other. Looks like Kanekoprob actually trying to get out here. Failware, though, didn't have the choice. He was tracked up, took a lot of damage, and there's been some damage done back by KB here. But still, synergy seemed to just be making things work. But look at the little flank on the side. Bratty, very importantly, on the 50B, getting good shots off. Even managed to bounce a couple as well. He wants to shut down Dreamlike as quickly as he can, but KB lose the first tank. Yeah, very good stuff. I mean, they just go straight in. They get that first peak off very easy. That gives them a significant advantage. There's a T54E1 and a 50B just to go hull down. And yeah, okay, KB tries to flank a little bit, but um, Synergy is playing it pretty nicely right yeah. now. Even send Crest picks on the flank a little bit. Yeah, they're a bit thin, but you can see Synergy. They're going to just follow the flank. They're going to keep chasing around here. And they're going to catch Pat out as well. So that as long as they keep moving, the other arm of KB's flank isn't going to be able to take him out. But Crux comes in. He takes down Ludi Pavlo. Bratty has four shots to go. Crux with two, and they're looking straight towards John and Mirsky. They don't exactly have an overmatch. It's all quite chaotic here, but still, Synergy have the advantage. Well, they did, but now it's a 3v2 in a moment. In just one moment, in fact, two tanks drop for Synergy. They have more health, but Kanaka Broad have three, and what's even nastier is they have two 50Bs left to go. Yeah, Synergy... They they didn't really have any 50Bs, they had one and a T54E1. And you can see it as soon as KB's 50Bs came off their second reload cycle, they actually managed to get the advantage back pretty quickly. But, I mean, Happy Bobble's still on, you know, a significant amount of HP. Crespix has still got a little bit to play with. A couple of uh, in interesting oh. shots go well, but oh. Crux has found him. Crespix will drop here. I think he missed that first shot towards Crux. He just snuck his way back around the corner, but now he's a one-shot. Now it's just Happy Bubble with the only appreciable pool of health on the side of Synergy. The problem is he's not an autoloader. He'll get one shot off and get taken down. Crespix was so integral to the survival of Synergy in this round because of his rate of fire and the, the fact that he was an autoloader. Crux now is going to be able to move up on Happy Bubble. Crespix falls. And Synergy with such a great start, now it looks like they've run out of legs. Crux has two shots left to go. This is what happens when you're not an autoloader. Happy Bubble trying to angle his front towards Crux. He gets one more shot away, but Kanekoprod steal the win away. Even though Synergy looking fairly sharp towards the start, Oliver, that extra 50B, the fact that two 50Bs were kept alive the whole game means it was always going to be more damage in a pinch for KB. Yeah, and I think, you know, Synergy got a little bit lost in that middle of the match. They were, they were pushing down that hill. They're pretty slow. They got stopped around that corner. They didn't want to go around the corner for some reason. And uh, KB tried to come from behind. They had, the, the, I think they had the T54 Lightweight and AMX 50B or something like that. And they were pushing in quite nicely. Crespix, yeah, he's playing a T54 E1, but the reload's not great on that thing. Yeah. And, um, you know, he was just out of the battle for a bit. I think if, he had, if Crespix had played better in that position, off to the flank, he would have been a lot more significant. He even got killed by nobody in the uh, last portions of that game. I think even when he had reloads of some, some shells. And he did, he had three. Yeah, he had three shells there. So, I mean, he just didn't have a good game. And, yeah, I think uh, those 50Bs really saved, saved KB in that one. Um, the FE215Bs. They didn't exchange that well. It took quite a long time to take down Failware. Yep. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not going to work out for you. And the damage potential of those two can, you know, get another two tier tens down very quickly. And I think it was a decent response from Kanekobrod as well. I mean, if you remember, we did see Crux and Pad actually push around the corner and try and force their way in. So, you know, we saw KB trying to flank and Synergy were responding to that and they kept moving around the building. Mm. Problem was is that they ended up fighting on two fronts and as soon as those auto loaders started coming back in, they got completely trashed. That being said, definitely a game that they could have won, but they're not going to worry about it now too much as they move on to the next one. Crux, there you go. He's either the centerpiece or he's, uh, you know, a liability, but this time 4.2k for him. Next page very, very quickly now as the next game started. Dreamlike with 386 damage. That's a big problem when it was KB's uh, AMX 50Bs that won them the game. Dreamlike yeah. really needed to do more. Yeah, both of those 50Bs for KB were atop there. And uh, yeah, it was it's, it's about individual skill with a 50B as well. I mean, if you can hit your shells, you've only got four to make. You need to make sure you're hitting at least three of them. What about three 50Bs, Oliver? <coughs> Well, I'm not a massive fan. As I said, I, I think more than two autoloaders is going to extreme, and I think more than one Waffentrager is going way to the extreme. But yeah, as you've seen, Synergy have picked up three of them with two FE215Bs. I guess the double conco kind of makes up for the fact that they got yep. um, the extra 50B, but still, I mean, with that lineup, 
basically going to the cap is going to be very, very hard for them indeed. I mean, you can't get a tank in that cap, in the north at least, which can go hull down. So you've got to Ooh. go for that cap number two Ooh. or the exchange. Oh dear. Now these 50Bs need to strike quickly and decisively. Shots are coming out, but they're not doing a lot of damage. Just the one hit towards Hellfish. And now the whole element of surprise of these 50Bs has been negated. Failware, Hellfish and Pad just setting up here. They're going to get shots down towards this road, whereas Bratty and Crux out towards the side, they can come in from the side, get the flank on with their own 50Bs. Look at them. They're ready to pounce. And they know Happy Bubbles around the corner. So Happy will probably see them eventually but this is a good setup from Connecticut Broad. They can accept a push and then they can make one of their own with the 50 Bs. Happy Bubble gets tracked on the corner, re repairs immediately. This is going to force Crespix to get a little bit nervous as damage still being done over towards the middle of the map as well. Ludi Pavlo, Mursky taking damage as well. Some being responded towards Bratty, but it's not enough. And Synergy, all the momentum they took into this first play has dissipated utterly. I really like that double 50 B stack up there. Very patient around the corner. They knew Happy Bubble would try and go hold down. Uh, My Tato is just there in response in case they want to and a T110 E5, but of course Dreamlike was in the background. Oh, here we go. And uh, since she's actually starting to go forward, seeing that the 50Bs are coming from behind, but they almost off reload, could be too late. That's it. We already see Pad fall down, so these 50Bs must land shots. They are behind the 50, the 215B, so that is a bonus. Now the shots come in. Crux is there. Bratty's about to come off his own reload cycle, and it's got to get nasty for Synergy right now. The shots are coming in, and Happy Bubble, he already used his repair kit. He gets caught on the corner from a track. They're trying to jump on Failware, but Ludi Pavlo and Mihailov go from the Hunters to the Hunters. They're just trying to back away. But again, the rest of the FP215 Bs here on Connect Abroad, they're, I guess, backing up the auto-loaded core. Looks like Synergy had maybe too many 50 Bs. They've still got two left, but they might not get another reload cycle. Mihailov falls. John there, trying to get shots in. Dreamlike punching around the corner as well. He still has some shots to go, but Braddy looks healthy. He hopes to soak some damage, but at least Synergy cleverly aren't focusing Braddy right now. But now he's going to bite back with a vengeance. John's going to go down here with his next shot. Mighty Artur around the corner sustained through a lot of damage. He's Mursky on his own. I just think KB is playing better World of Tanks right now. I mean, they're making the better decisions. They're being more logical. And the thing about Ghost Town is that you can't be so aggressive all the time. You've got to have a, sure. a balance between aggression and, and just being passive because often on Ghost Town, you're playing on multiple fronts. You're trying to go around corners. You're trying to be aggressive. But you've got to get the timing right. And the double 50Bs from behind, you have a situation where Synergy are driving uphill with slower heavy tanks. 50Bs coming behind, they're going to hit 1.6k damage straight into your back. You just need to keep them in that bottleneck situation and then you can get the uh, you can get the damage in very quickly. And I think by that time it was already game over. KB were like 2,000, 3,000 hit points ahead and they're all funneled into one position. So really good stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is about KB, this is their map. You know, they love Ghost Town. You can see that they're very good at it. Um, we did, you know, a good tactical review with um, Hell Fish, the, the guy who actually does the tactics for KB. Um, and, he, you know, they just got the mind for it. And when he was talking about the map, he was talking about how quickly you have to react, how, you know, vehemently you have to go into these situations, but also have a little bit of patience. Always have that backup plan where, you know, there's a, maybe a 50B coming off reload or, or a T54 or whatever, just something else apart from your main force that can bring it back into your favor in those later stages of the matches. So, yeah, I mean, very... Very aggressive start from Synergy on these two rounds and very easily quenched by uh, KB. Absolutely. Hellfish and Fail were actually topping the damage charts here and not necessarily the 50 Bs. Although Braddy and Crux still find themselves on that front page. Now let's talk about this, Ollie. Was the problem for Synergy, was it the extra 50 B or was it the fact that where they pushed and where they stopped? I don't think, I mean, the tank lineup is always important, but I mean... I think, first of all, Happy Bubble going around the corner in the FE2 on 5B receiving 800 damage. And then, you know, being entirely spotted, the fact that KB could keep them in that lower position without them being able to move forwards and also get the um, the flank. I mean, if they had pushed as soon as they'd seen those 50B shooting against Happy Bubble, then you would have known that they have like a 25 second window where they can push in straight up the hill and uh, be able to get some sort of overmatch. Um, you know, that's an option. But the fact that they couldn't have any of those situations. They couldn't even have a flank and KB could gave them the advantage. But we're moving on to steps very quickly in our next match. These two teams obviously wanting to uh, go blow for blow. Um, completely different map. Uh, more of an open one. The least popular map this season, actually. Um, unfortunately, it was always a bit of a favorite of mine. I love these open ones. 
And this is where Synergy can start to, uh, you know, do some damage. They're, they're a very proficient team on this map. Yeah, we were saying that, actually. This was definitely their pick last season. And bringing a specialized lineup in, I'd like to say, as well. Double IS-7, double E-50 here. And a bit of a mixture of medium tanks here as well. So Synergy, they were the kings of steps in Season 1. Will it be the same here in this match right towards the end of Season 2? They're already down by two rounds, hoping to make some back here. And it would be not a moment too soon as we roll out with Mihailov, of course. And the 2-5-1 Synergy on the attack in blue. Yeah, Rusty Roster went up against Synergy and lost 2-0. I think Kanza Crew did the same thing. So this is all Synergy's map. And, you know, that's how it's been going in 76 here when you have two rounds per map. You have the map you like, you win 2-0, two, two, two and then you have the map you dislike and you end up losing 2-0. So it just goes back and forth until they have a map where everyone has an idea how to play it or doesn't know how to play it. You know, it's just two ways of the same coin. So pushing through the middle of my territory on Hellfish, Bratty in the background there, the STBs. And uh, Synergy, they have great information at the start. I mean, they know that Hellfish and Amitar are pushing. They know where KBR and they're still pushing forwards with an IS-7 and E50M. Very strong lineups from um, Synergy. Absolutely. I mean, the amount they can bounce here as well. I mean, E50s, honestly, the decent bit of armor on them as well. The IS-7's going to be hard to crack. Pad very, very lucky to get around that corner without taking more damage than he could have. And you can see that Connect Broad normally teams usually just might just sit back a little bit here into what's a valley but kb bit of a weird setup here actually on the higher ground they're gonna they better hope it's gonna work out here because they're about to receive the bulk of synergy's push here with dreamlike around the side i fail to see how kanaka brought are gonna be ready for this at all well crooks is in the background and they did quite an interesting move they pushed a mighty auto health through the middle but then sent them back immediately and actually i mean the exchanges are going pretty evenly paddy's a bit in a screwed situation though in the 140. Uh, he's been caught out he was always gonna be the first to go down here very, very heavily damaged gun, tracks, and fuel tanks, but still able to get away from this one and be able to do some damage a bit later on. Crispy's actually getting chunked down. Pad finally falls there as John has the angle on him. And look at these IS-7s in the middle as well. So hard to deal with for KB. They really have to work around them as much as they can. But when you get an IS-7 and you shove it in the gob of your opponent, you force him to deal with it on the spot. And I don't know if Kaneka brought have what they need for that. No artillery for them, by the way. So they have to work it the old-fashioned way here. No one wants to be head-to-head -head with an IS-7, but Hellfish may have the finish. He needs to get a decent angle on towards his IS-7. He bounces that shot. That's going to hurt. John goes side on. He survives it, though, and that's important as Synergy start to get out to a, quite a lead here. Yeah, 3,000 hit points ahead right now, Synergy. I mean, I felt like KP just went straight into the lion's jaws then and uh, basically paid with their lives. I mean, we've still got a like a four versus four, six situation, so it's not entirely into Synergy's hands, but I think uh, unless Synergy screw up as much as Strong Siemer did last week in that clutch, uh, it should be about game overs. Dreamlight just comes over that hill and wants to try and keep uh, Failwa from taking down Luthi Pavlo. Yeah, I think Synergy have all they need to finish this one off in style. And the Kings of Steps maintain their throne here with a very, very strong first round performance on this map. I'm not sure we'll get cut down and nobody well, he's the only one he had left with 50 points of health. He'll duck, dodge, dip, dive, and dodge roll if he can, but it won't be enough, and it's going to be Synergy to get one back here as well. Obviously, that first map makes sense for it to be KB's pick. Synergy, though, you got to like being in a position where you can pull that steps map mm -hmm. out and throw it at someone and go, now what? <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's a that's a trump card at the end of the day. You always know you, can, you, you feel comfortable and you can win on it, but I mean... I think, you know, the what Object 140 going forwards, Pader was, you know, a big, big sacrifice they had to make there and too much of a sacrifice. Losing that tier 10 straight off the bat, yep. that's pretty much given Synergy the opening they need through the middle to actually be able to send the I-7 there. And then you had the E-50 just in a, in a decent position, just able to use that HP and that armor uh, across those hills. Easy stuff from them. And uh, yeah, then they, they got control of the North in three versus one situation against, uh, I think it was Failware in the STB-1 and things started to go pretty badly in favor of uh, Synergy. I felt like maybe nobody should have flanked around in the RU251. He was in the middle behind, but he maybe should have been all the way around. That could have given an opening for KB to surge through the middle, or at least for him to do um, more damage. And you can see that E50 did really a, a lot of damage. I mean, 3,500 on steps against these medium tanks is uh, pretty significant. Absolutely. Very, very big from them. And we've rarely seen the E50Ms, or the E50s for that matter, actually get to make a big impact here in some of these games. But good use of them here. The fact that Ludi Pavlo was able to do just so much damage. And to be honest, he uh, didn't actually get shot at. So, you know, this is all free damage for Ludi Pavlo. I mean, no shots connected onto him anyway. So that's pretty handy uh, for, for any medium tank if you're left free to your own devices. And, I mean, 
those IS-7s are, are bound to command a lot of attention, and they did. I mean, maybe if there was some artillery available to KB, and they weren't already shunted themselves up onto the high ground, they might have been okay. But it's a very weird defensive setup as well, I think. Normally mm. teams either push down towards the south from the north, or they just chill inside the valley. So don't really know what the plan there was for KB, but perhaps as the plot thinkers will start to find out what their deal is as we do go on towards our next half of this particular map. And that's a chance, uh, you know, will it be 3-1 or 2-2? I mean, it would be nasty for Synergy not to get both rounds on this map, especially after having such a very, very, very uh, weak showing after that strong first round mm. on uh, Ghost Town. So let's see. Object 140s, STB ones here for Connect Abroad, and a little bit more of a diverse lineup here for Synergy. Yeah, it's... Um a lot more, you know, they got the I-7s, the E-50s, and uh, pretty much every single tank um, you could possibly have available. And remember, the teams don't have any restrictions. They can pick five, five, six of the same tanks they really wanted to, but they don't. They always go for those uh, specific tanks for s uh, different situations. Maybe they want an I-7 to go hull down. They want the STB for the DPM, the Object 140 for the first utility. But, I mean, just looking at these two teams, I mean, Synergy's biggest problem this season is that they've been a little bit too static in terms of they've been playing very methodically and not really surprised anyone. And KB, I think they're trying to break that down by just being really fast, aggressive, going forwards. And um, I know, I mean, at the end of the day, both these teams have nothing to lose. I mean, if, yep. they, if they win, they still have, they have a good chance to go to the finals, at least go into those pre-playoffs. If they lose... I mean, whatever. I mean, they, they just have to go hell for leather. They have no other chances. They have to make everything work for them. And um, I think I think right now, KB's still playing the better game. Um, but a pretty slow start for them. No artillery from both teams. Hellfish now going forwards a little bit. You can see the lines just... Uh, both teams just wanting to be... You know, just feeling each other out for these first couple of minutes. And I feel like um, both of these teams have cookie-cutter lineups for different reasons, actually. Synergy wants a bit of everything here. They're defending. They don't know what Kanekoprod's going to be bringing towards them. Whereas Kanekoprod, who maybe aren't very well practiced on the attacking side of steps, which a lot of teams aren't, well, you know, it's very normal to see triple 140, double STB1 and a Batcha and maybe some sort of tier 8 there. So... I don't think either of these lineups are specialized whatsoever, actually, as I sort of contradict myself earlier. I meant that Synergy were bringing a bit of a mix. They've got a lot of different things, right? But nothing really um, you know, catered towards staving off anything specific. And KB as well. Don't, maybe don't really know exactly what they want to do. And that would be evidenced by their relatively ponderous movements here in the early stages of this round. Yeah, they are. I think they just wanted to see if Synergy wanted to send the I-7 really aggressively forwards and take it out. And, you know, we've seen, for instance, RU-251s, AMX 3090s being um, pretty swiftly removed from that eastern side of the map because they've just gone too aggressive. And I think that's probably what KB wants to do with uh, Bratty in the background in the bat chat and the Object 140. But they're starting to head up towards that northern side of the map. And, of course, I think KB's next move will be to see, well, A, are we going to get spotted first um, by Happy Bubble? and uh, B, just to blind shot all the bushes, try and take down Happy Bubble and move on. Happy Bubble moving away, actually. That's interesting. I mean, yeah. I don't know why. I mean, the E can just spot out very nicely. There's no boosted tank up onto that right side for Synergy. So I think probably a little bit uh, quick to the chase there. And um, it will force him now to make that suicide run scout to try and stop the cap, which KB will inevitably uh, initiate. Yeah, I mean, if Happy Bubble, like you said, Olivia, was already set up and didn't maybe get cold feet and, and move back in towards the valley, he would have been able to spot tanks first, and that actually would have been a chance for Synergy to do good initial damage, right? doesn't mean they would have reset consistently from there. Yes, maybe Happy Bubble would have been spotted eventually, but at least that early damage is good. It sends Connector brought a message, and it puts Synergy in a good spot, and it gives them a good idea of where these tanks are. Now, Mersky... He's uh, doing a bit of poking up here, and we'll see Hellfish. Now, Hellfish, the only tank on the side of KB that has been spotted thus far uh, in the last minute or so here. So that's all Synergy know about the setup. They don't know Almighty Archer has pushed towards 8-2, which is, to be fair, really, really, really common spot anyway. And we often don't really see tanks survive that long in that position. But you can see Mersky from here, maybe, unless it's Hellfish spotting. You can see the traces there as well. Shot towards Mersky, not actually connecting here. The STB v STB. Not the most well-armoured tank, so the turret is not too bad. It's more decent with gun depression, and this is not a bad situation for them to be used here as well. As Synergy want to poke up that hill, they want to get resets as nobody has started off the cap. Yeah, nobody's obviously in a more of a DPM kind of uh, lineup there with the coated optics. Um, Ooh. Ooh, that's, that was a pretty close shot there, but he can see he's got good camera value, just default. A Mighty is going to hold the left side. Gun laying dry is going to help him when he has to fight the MX-1390. And uh, let's see, let's see how this one works. I mean, 
to be honest, I think Synergy's kind of played into KB's hands, and as long as KB doesn't kind of uh, do anything unusual, Synergy will have a, pr a pretty hard time of actually beating this tactic. This tactic's been pretty successful. Also, you've got the bat chat in the background, Bratty, who's still there in that position, and uh, quite a few tanks there on the left side as well for KB. Ooh, the timing might not be very good for KB, though. If Synergy want to push now, that, that little wolf pack of mediums towards the south side of the map won't be in position to do anything. They'll be missing Bratty as well in the bat chat. Happy Bubble goes forward and gets spotted immediately, but doesn't spot nobody. Still having to blind fire at the cap. Nobody has moved off, though, so he may have been spotted at one point or just got a bit nervous maybe the side of the synergy tanks pushing forward was enough to scare him off but this is a distraction synergy all this time looking towards the northern cap towards the middle of the map we do see object 140s and stb in a bat chat they are ready to get into position now dreamlike can't see those tanks over there he doesn't really know what's coming and if connect abroad can get in a good position go for something two prong try and keep uh synergy busy Nobody will either be able to cap or there'll be a great opening for those medium tanks in the south. Now, nobody should always keep the back of his tank to Synergy Era. It gives him a lesser profile. He'll side on before, which is why he almost got hit. But he's uh, changed tact now as well, cleverly enough, and some blind shots will continue to roll in. Now you can also drive away faster because obviously reversing is slower than going forwards. Um, but I mean, this is good from, from KB. I think they got kind of scared that the I-7 and what, it wasn't spotted, but they were scared that the I-7 or whatever was in the background. So they're actually trying to pile through the middle of the map, but they're coming from the right side. You can see none of them have been spotted. They got significantly Speak. towards that position. And I don't know, I mean, if they do a significant amount of damage against any tank they find here, this could go well for them, but if, for instance, Sinji just surge over towards that northern side along the eight line, take down a mighty Artor, then that advantage will be pretty quickly negated. The thing is here, if, if KB can catch Synergy by surprise, it might only give them one or two free shots, but that could be enough. They're going to make the push now, though. They've seen the high aloft, but damage is already coming back towards him, and Crux is tracked by Dreamlike. He's going to be slowed down immensely as he takes a lot of damage. Nobody as well got slapped heavily on the cap. He's been forced to move off now, and it's on for young and old. The cat is definitely out in the bag, and the high aloft is going to find himself surrounded by these ones. Like Hyenas, they pick him off, and it's Bratty. A little bit low, has to peel off from the main group here, but good, good damage being done by KB. This is an excellent little flanking push obviously no cap for them now they may want to go in for the fight they are one tank ahead as well but bratty is very very low crux has seen better days as well and the cap has begun again this time on capture point number two really interesting stuff hellfish i think was probably a little bit aggressive in that situation actually um just going forwards against a tvp that was actually coming off reload but he's some got some good support what? in the background john really getting crunched down now mate he's got rngs it's not just support health is somehow still alive he will fall now but john got full health pushed around the corner and got completely wrecked there. He missed his shot and that caused him to take so much damage. Now, Happy Bubble in the back needs to uh, have some attention paid towards him now by KB. They have a decent lead, about 2k. They're on two caps now. They might just settle for the north here. This is a great idea, by the way. Braddy, low on health. He shifts up towards the north side here. He's going to lend his weight to that capping effort. That's going to cut the time down to 30 seconds. And the rest of Synergy are too busy with these connect broad forces to actually go and deal with it. Beautiful, adaptive play from KB. Like you said, Oliver, they're definitely playing better water tanks right now. This is a stunning show of how to attack on the side of steps. And Mike Tartor just coming in at the end. He was on that uh, A-line for the whole time, just Perfect. sniping down into the side of Synergy. Finds the two tanks very easy. Happy Bobble trying to get that kill onto Fail, where doesn't find him. Mursky will pick up a consolidation prize of a Mighty Artor. But I mean, this is a f five versus two situation, even though so many tanks are low for KB. Absolutely brilliant. KB will get that base capture done in the northern side, and that will be the game. Stunning stuff for them, and Synergy have got to be kicking themselves, Ollie, to have lost this one here. KB sneak it away with actually a really, really good two-pronged assault. Mm. I wasn't sure how it would go to start with, Ollie, when we saw that push from the wolf packs, but the wolf pack of medium, should I say? But it did definitely work down as well, at least eventually. I actually thought, I mean, if Synergy had sent the I7 uh, and the MX1390, of course, a couple of other mediums, then of course that would have been Synergy's round. But um, KB got a little bit panicked. They sent the tanks through the middle, then they went on that right side. But Hel I, I think it was Hellfish just in the middle, constantly poking the Object 140, kind of. Um, turn the gaze of uh, Synergy towards him in that Object 140 sure. continuously, and then they managed to push the right side. Initial damage actually was pretty even, but then they had that hold down position on that little hill next to the cap, and they had obviously the rock there. Um, and Bratty just being aggressive, getting that first kill, the bat chat, peeling off the left, joining Hellfish in the 140, and then having that whole position together. Um, and then, of course, John, you know, he going over that top side 
showing that low, lower glaciers in the i7, getting taken down instead of going into a right side flank or whatever. Yeah, but yeah I mean, but, baited that so well, yeah, dude. I mean, it was really good. I mean, first of all, individual play was perfect from KB. Tactic was sound and synergy way too far up the north. No yep. spots, no information, no blind shots even from the middle. I just don't understand why John was so keen to go for Hellfish. He was a one shot. He was poking hill to get the finish when there were tanks that could have reloaded. Hellfish was tracked on the ground. He couldn't do anything. And yet John had to go for it, and he lost his life for it. That's, that's, your, that's your captain and caller falling a long way short of maybe what is expected of him in those situations. Had he stayed alive, they would have still had that big I-7, the big body there to work with. And KB on top of that, they won the fight. Mm. But they also had the contingency plan of two caps capping in the north, and there was no way Synergy could respond. Really, really nice here. Damage counts there. Uh, nobody, obviously, with no damage, but he capped. He ended up winning the game here. Happy Bubble as well. He was a man trying to reset. Only one hit. One penetrating hit for damage, that's all he got. And there's John as well. Not a good sign. No, not at all. I think a mighty at all definitely gets a red line sniper trophy this uh, this, <laughs> this match and that A line. But he did come in the end, did the damage, got the kills, and you can't argue with that at all. After all, these tanks have health. You do damage, you take off health. You know, it's his logic of the mm -hmm. game. So, um, great. I mean, 3 1, great scoreline for, for KB. They've gotten through, I think, probably the hardest map on uh, this uh, matchup for the them. The best on Synergy's uh, list, I exactly. think. Exactly. It's just their, you know, this is their. You know, the comfort zone is the happy place steps. Uh, moving on to Himmelsdorf next. I mean, Synergy have been pretty good on this one, I have to say as yeah. well. But I mean, KB they look like the better team. They just need to make sure they have those principles nails uh, nailed. Typically being like a one to three line pusher on the defensive side, like to come off those, uh, come off those hills on uh, the attacking side. Yeah, I thought mines would actually pop up here for Synergy, to be honest. I thought that was one that I would go for in here. But Melee, last time we checked in, it was a 69% to a 31, if my maths is correct, vote. Has that changed at all? So it switched from almost 70 to 70%. So right. we were sitting on 70% for Knäckebröt. And uh, yeah, Knäckebröt is doing well. So the community predicted more of a pretty close match to be honest 5-3 5-4 a lot of 5-4s actually so maybe we'll see the deciding map in our very fir first match of the night already so people thank you for getting involved in this um, team vote which is obviously closed since we're headed well after the fourth round uh, and about to head into our, into our fifth round uh, of this uh, current match don't be sad the next vote will be up in a few minutes so check back in on facebook.com slash wgleu to get involved in our next voting for a second match of the night but at first the first has to end actually That's also right. use the hashtag wgleu over at twitter to tell us what's on your mind to tweet us anything well maybe questions fire away our experts are sitting here they want something to do besides casting tanks that's right there's always plenty of time in between uh, to take your questions guys so don't hesitate to do that um so, I mean, Synergy on Himmelsdorf's pretty darn good bets. Uh, they've mm. played in the last uh, two weeks, the last two match days, they've played it twice. They've won 2 by both times. One was against Rusty Roster, but the other one was against Utopia. So even against Utopia, they managed to sort of sweep them off the floor. But this is KB. I'd say a slightly higher caliber opposition here. I don't think Synergy get, get both rounds here, but I think they get one. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, at the end of the day, KB only needs one. Um, they just need a defensive side, and they can be laughing. They can at least, uh, you know, have their next map to play on. Of course, you know, the, the teams like Synergy, the Russian-speaking teams, have always been more sim uh, more s kind of suited towards Himmelsdorf, that style of play. And uh, yeah, definitely going to be hard for KB to win the attacking side, which is where they are starting off on from that south and southern area. And Synergy starting from the north with a... Pretty heavy lineup, double Waffentrag at E100 as well, but an AMX 3090 for a bit of speed as it heads down the north and KB with their standard pick on this map, uh, T124 oh, played by Hellfish with just a normal tank supporting. And my favorite 113, we're going to be seeing that as well, so we know how excited I get about that one. It's nobody and by the looks of things, Almighty Artur up on the hill here, so they'll be looking as per usual for a bit of information. Now, what I find interesting here, Ollie, is that Synergy haven't pushed a lot down towards the south. They put an IS-7 on that G line. That's a good spot there, but they work nothing on the train line. Happy Bubbles have been spotted as well. So that information already going across here. Really, really hard tank to dig out of that spot. There's no doubt about it. But how impactful can it be if Kanakabro just pushed their way straight down the eight line? This is the thing. Failware is already most of the way down that eight line. He's so close to be able to challenge Ludi Pavlo right now. And if spots are going to come down from the hill, 
there's so much that he can do from there if he gets enough backup from his team. They can't leave him out there to dry. That will be a problem. So Happy Bubble's going to have not a lot to shoot at here, if I'm honest with you. I mean, the 3090 on the hill is not really going to penetrate the one, uh, the I-7 from the from the turret. Can't not really accurate enough to hit the cupola or anything like that. Ludi Pavlo firing HG. Yeah, he's just trying to get the splash damage on the I-7's turret. Probably will struggle considering it's probably one of the strongest armored tanks in the game. But I mean. If KB push the eight line, they must know that there's Waffentrag in the background. It will be able to cancel out basically any tank that's there. So it's going to be hard. I mean, they have sent Felway aggressively, so it, it's going to be hard for him to get into a defensive position. Some uh, shots going towards nobody. There is a batch out on the hill as well with him, um, played by a mighty Artur, and those two can link up pretty effectively. Um, I like Synergy lineup because, I mean, they've got the AMX 3090 for the spots and they can also put it in the bush in C1 where it is currently. So that, that one to three line cap is pretty hard to take down. They got a, you know, a, a good corner tank set up with the Waffentragers and E100s and a lot of HP from that uh, E100. So I, I like it, but uh, I think this is going to be a game of peaks. I think KB needs to be able to do some damage with their T110E4 and fail with the IS-7. He needs to stop putting pressure on Luti Pavlo, but Paddy's in the background, and uh, I don't think he really expected it. Dreamlike receives a, da uh, receives a shell. Yeah, the Waffentrager now pushing down. That's why Ludi Pavlo came forward, actually, so the Waffentrager could actually sit on that corner and still take shots, but it hasn't really worked out the way the Dreamlike might have liked it. He's taken a heck of a lot of damage, has to roll back off the hill, and one of Synergy's biggest bastions of defense now cut down at the knees. Another big hit in towards him. It's a nice roll as well. Puts him down to 5 4 7. He has to back away around the corner. He has no shots yet to fire. So, an opening here, perhaps, for Kaneka Broad. A sign of weakness. Almighty Archer would love to have been able to catch Dreamlike as so he backed close away. As well. So close to catching him in that situation. Uh, that was a careless move from Synergy. I mean, Paddy is going to be in the background. Waffentrager trying to get a, some damage Ooh. on the top of the IS 7's hole. Could bounce a couple or will at least receive three. So, yeah, I mean, that's giving KB a way and they can at least push in up that eight line. One shot that Waffentrager and move on towards whatever tank that's in behind, which is the E100, coincidentally. So, I really want to know how Synergy responds to this. There's 110E4 up on the hill. That's a, a bit of an unorthodox position to have that big old tank destroyer, and Hellfish does take a bite out of Happy Bubble as a result. Now, that is, uh, I guess, a position where you can deal with an IS-7. You've got a big gun on the 110E4, decent penetration as well, I'm pretty sure, and Still, not every shot will connect, but Happy Bubble now being threatened much more by Hellfish. Yeah, just HE shells, 900 uh, apiece, just going to be smacking that uh, IS-7, at least from the top, yep. where the uh, the bubble of that HE explosion will find its way onto a weaker part of the top of that turret. So let's see, I mean, they've got time. KB still got, you know, the time they need. They've got the peaks they need, and um, they just need to make a decision. And Himmelsdorf is one of those maps. Once you made a decision, there is no going back on it. You've got to be pushing in. You've got to be hitting those shells. There's no, there's no plan B. There's very rarely a clutch situation in Himmelsdorf. Um, I think we've only seen a couple this season. Yep. Um, so either a crushing victory or a horrible defeat. Yeah, I mean the thing is, we see clutch situations when the autoloaders get their reload in the perfect time. Yep. In Himmelsdorf, your autoloader is going to go down first, basically, when you push around the corner. Or, you know, you can't get them out of there because it's it's long roads, easy shots onto the back of them. They'll have to turn that corner before um, they can actually get into a safe zone. So, I mean, um, the fact that Failware is there and Crux is actually trying to find a way on, and at the end of the day, I mean, Hellfish can just splash damage Happy Bubble. Happy Bubble's been kept there by the FE215B up the 8-line continuously. And... Um, I think KB wants to be in a position where he's down to 1,600 HP, where Crux can just push around the corner and take him down. But of course, Crespix is in the background in that Waffentragen support. And he will be set up to do damage as well. He's looking straight down that 2-3 line, as you can see on your screen here. So definitely, I would maybe be hoping someone pushes him right now. He just needs to be ready to take the shots. And this is bad timing from Crespix, actually, to back around the corner, I think. Bat chat, yeah, it's moving out wide, and so is nobody. And Crespix is lit as well. This is gonna hurt. Oh, does dodge just shot, or maybe less dodge and more just completely missed him here. But nobody still has gotten into a very crucial position. This will enable Crespix to remain perpetually lit. 
if he does poke through the fence. It's just a bit of a dangerous game for nobody here, but he has wasted a couple of those shots from Crespix. He does need to be careful, though, as well. A couple go towards him, and he's dead. That's all he has to do, though. I mean, that's a classic maneuver where you just turn when you know when you know the aim down time of the other tank. You just turn at that last second, and you can guess pretty accurately if, you, accurately if you're going to miss the shell or not. <sighs> Hellfish, brilliant damage on the back of John. You can actually see the carelessness of uh, Synergy being punished continuously, and Crux receives a lot, but Crespix is now on reload. And uh, Milov is the only cr real pain um, for in the background, the MX-1390. Yeah, might be able to take down Crux, though, if Crux is not careful. He took the brunt of the damage away from Crespix. I think that was the issue there. But there is Ludi Pavlo finally falling down, and John still being harassed here. I'd say from Hellfish coming rack around from the side, but he must be careful. There are two big tanks between him and Victory, and an FB215B coming up pretty quickly here. John, big shot in towards Failware, but that's not going to stop the man from coming forward here. In that IS-7, the Dreamlike as well, will be ready to take him here. Kanaka Broad circling, going in for the kill maybe soon. He caught Mersky with his head turned as well, and he's going to pay for that one through the nose, or the turret, whichever one you prefer. And still Hellfish can sit back, really. Synergy got their heads turning in every single different direction here, and they've actually not been able to get any shots to stick. Foulware has a nice little side scrape. Still takes a shot, though, because he exposed his lower glasses on that pullout. But Hellfish is in such a strong situation. He can easily solo Mursky. Paddy and Fairway can take down John on the next couple of shells because that longer reload. But Dreamlike has made a decision, has gone for, gone for Paddy. He yeah, was in a good spot there as well, and that's going to hurt Connect Rod really badly. To be fair, they're still in this one. They've got four tanks to work with. Hellfish actually just absorbs that one into his tracks miraculously and he gets the finish john looking in the complete and utter wrong direction it'll be dreamlike actually to try and deal with hellfish but hellfish ooh, yep he'll be reloaded it's fine okay i thought he might go down a dreamlike second shot but hellfish still gets the kill here he probably hits john john falls down and dreamlike did as well so this is very very good now for kanaka board they're turning this around nicely on the attacking side no less nobody he'll be uh, the one to get the shot it's crux actually that got it there beautiful stuff from kb this is really really good tanks so and this is far better mm. than you expect from a rookie team this is far better than we see from out of range from rusty roster from penta as well of course as um, strong Siemi here this is excellent play from them it's why they're so far up the ladder yeah. and they really now put synergy on the ropes i feel like this is the kind of kb we're expecting to see at this uh, an earlier stage in the season like we was, we saw them in the first half of the season kind of working up to this style and then they had a slump after that uh, christmas break um, as a lot of us did uh, in terms of just, you know, not being able to, you know, perform at a high level, not being able to get off the couch because you've ate too much Christmas yeah. pudding and you know, all these kind of problems come in. And then, you know, they, they've obviously worked it back in. You know, they've got their team kind of sorted and prepped and they're playing a really high level world tanks. You know, they're punishing mistakes. First of all, most important thing, giving themselves that advantage, having a backup plan. It, on, on, on a different corner coming from multiple angles and just you know abusing from every single angle that that kind of puts synergy which is an overmatch team into an awkward position where, where they want to get two versus ones but there's you know an always a line of sight onto another player yeah. of kb who can provide support to that two versus one situation so yeah i mean they're looking right on track to uh, to go pretty easily 5-1. But I think you you spelled it out towards the start of that round, Dolly, um, where the picks were good for Kanekablot. They started things off well. The control over the eight line was good. They'd already put down uh, Dreamlike to half health. They put a lot of damage on the Ludi Pavlo in the, yeah. in, in the 113. Let's have a look at the comeback, though, anyway. Failware, he was on the eight line. He was in the thick of things from the very start, and he managed to not only survive, but do a heck of a lot of damage. Hellfish as well, such a threat on that hill. When he pushed off is when it got even nastier. Yeah, I mean, Hellfish was an interesting pick because he had the T124, not a particularly high DPM tank, um, but because he was a strong vehicle, like they, he was in a position where he's hauled down behind that rubble, which would meant that Synergy would have had to push in around him and actually gone for him. And people were like, yeah, okay, they could pick an FE215B and then go to that position. But no, yeah. because the other team could just get the peaks on him, they actually have to engage him to be able to kill him. So really nice play by him. Did a plenty of damage, but you know, I7 just got a little bit more. And Mialov again at the bottom of that uh, count back in the AMX 1390. And yeah, fantastic first round here for, um, for KB on Himmelsdorf. Methodical, well played, well thought out. Um, uh, round for them and now moving on the easier side of the defense for their match point. I'll be honest with you, I used to dread casting Kaneko uh matches, not because of what I saw, but because of the name, right? I knew because uh, we know Crux, every time I got it wrong, he'd say, it's like this. I'm like, I can't pronounce those <laughs> letters, mate. But I have to say now, I look forward to their games when they come around because you just see the best damn tanks, I think, uh, more so than a lot of other teams. Sometimes the execution's not there, but you've got to love the creativity. You've got to love the uh, the insights that you get from watching how Kaneko Broad put together their strategy 
strategies. Now, the set plays are very, very good. Their defense is where they lost the round on steps against Synergy here, so they have to be solid as a rock on this part. They're going to go with the IS-4 in the north. We'll have to find out whether they're confident in this kind of old-school strategy or they're just being unimaginative. Oh, Dreamlight, though. What is he going to do? Uh, he, he's in a big tank. He's going to get spotted. He can't move. And KB are just waiting there. It, and nobody's in a great position behind the house. I think he's got... He's going to get spotted again, surely. Yeah, Dreamlike screwed. So, I mean, as soon as you have to make the move to try and force KB away from the position there, and if they don't want to, you know, lose a thousand Jeez, hit points nasty. of Dreamlike. What are they going to do? They, <laughs> he can't get out of there without being hit. Oh, my God. And he knows Amadi Artur has an angle on him. He, oh, what? Oh, it goes are you right there? I mean, I get the tracer is a little bit thicker, but you can see Artur is just pelting down shots towards him, and that one will connect. Dreamlike now realizing that he needs to move as soon as he possibly can. And... Oh, Mario Chua gets free damage. No one... <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, there we go. That's how many tanks are looking right in Dreamlike's direction right now. It's like those movies when you're trying to infiltrate a building and you, and, like, you spray the stuff and you see what the security system looks like or the lasers. That's what it is. Wargaming mod, mod pack confirmed. Uh, yeah, that's it. We map hack, guys. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I jump in uh, random battles on this account <laughs> just to play. Not but as effective you think it is, tell me. Tell no, me that. no. The, this actually, like, I think if I tried, we, we wouldn't even have a HUD. Because sometimes we have like the mod on because we forget and you have lasers and you can't see anything. You just see a red line in the middle of you. Can't, and you can't aim in sniper mode as well. You don't yeah. get any aiming reticle whatsoever. So you have to guess Hard where you're going to the tanks. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Uh, so anyway, Synergy pushing down the hill. Bit of an awkward situation for Dream. Like he's probably just going to have to take five or 752 at this rate. I don't really know if he can do go too far. And we do have Almighty Artur squeezed in pretty close here as well on J3, so a lot of flanking potential here. Do note the synergy of left those two 50Vs back. A late push towards the 8 line would be the most likely idea here, especially when a Kaneka Broad want to use the D line to in turn flank synergy's spearhead tank. So synergy in two groups here. Kaneka Broad in three, to be fair. And Mihailov looking just for, a, I guess, an open route to go towards his cap. I think the Mighty Artur is just coming off reload now in that batch set, so, so more damage will come towards him. He's actually he's not in position now to uh, do anything. Fellway receives one, and yeah, I mean, KB doesn't have to do anything at this point in time. They're in pretty normal positions, and they can actually rotate back up towards the north if they want to. They can get into the standard positions if they really have to defend uh, against this uh, push from that uh, hill. Um, so Synergy's just going to push down now. Mirloff starting to go aggressive, and I think that's what's going to happen at the end of the day. Um, Synergy are going to have to go aggressive. They are going to have to come off the hill. And uh, Failwet taking more damage, taking more than, he damage than he should do because he is that linchpin. He has to stay alive. He has to be able to keep Synergy back when they do push around the corner. And I think Hilf is getting a little bit nervous as well because he knows there's going to be some big tanks pushing in here, Ollie. I mean, Kaneko Broad have to respond to this very, very quickly and not get distracted by Dreamlike up on the hill. And I guarantee they're still looking at him as well, a few of them, because he's spotted. He's staying spotted. But now, actually, he can just be a distraction, just be a nuisance. It's hard to hit him from that spot. Only Artur could really do it. Uh, and he'll keep people interested for a while, I guess. But Bratty and Hellfish coming together, I mean, if they can get a f good full clip off, they're going to cripple Synergy coming forward here. Because the rest of KB actually haven't made any decisive moves. So it's only an IS-4 and two Waffentragers on this northern cap, which I wouldn't really call uh, the most airtight defense set. Well, the fact that those Waffentragers haven't peaked at all, Synergy doesn't really know where they are. I mean, they can kind of guess where one is. They can guess that it'll be in the A4 position, but the other one, for instance, could be in A2. I mean, that's where some teams like to put it. So, I mean, if they push into two Waffentragers, they can be killed extraordinarily quickly. Um, so I like the patience from KB. And at the end of the day, Synergy has to make a decision. They, they ha they've already lost five minutes and 30 seconds. We talk about two and a half minute cut off with 768. <laughs> and Dreamlike's still in a position where he's can continuously been spotted. and. I mean, Crooks, Paddy, and maybe nobody will get a shot. He perhaps won't die. He perhaps will, depending on the rolls or how lucky he gets. Um, but at the end of the day, he is stuck here. And the only thing he really has going for him is the fact that he knows that there's at least one tank also stuck in the position just to spot him. Yeah, and he knows that, obviously, because he's constantly being spotted. That's the only thing. So, Dreamlike set up here in uh, a position where he can't be shot by... Um, Either of those tanks over there as well, Crux. Failware keeps taking damage here as well. It's almost like he's being baited out into these peaks, and he should just sit tight for now. I mean, Happy Bubble doesn't... He probably should have the angle if he pushed... Well, he's trying to get an angle, I think, on towards the cap and on towards Failware, but he shouldn't be able to shoot him here. 
So if I could just sit, just sit for now and at least spot people or just be some kind of beacon. But I really wonder where Connect Abroad's decisive moves are going to come from here. This is quite smart though. Those 50 bees on the A line from Synergy now, they're getting in position. They're going to deny any egress on towards that part of the map here. So this is going to force Connect Abroad to commit. They must push across the cap, but they surely don't want to do it with two Waffentragers here. One of them has been lit. That's Hellfish. He's taken no damage quite yet, but this cap is moving very, very quick. Yeah, very quick. And uh, the Waffentragers might be able to push around the corner before, before those 50 bees get back but I don't think so anymore. So those Waffen Dragons are starting to accumulate. Go for his Hellfish receives one. Luti Pavlo managed to get the, the peak off, and right now it's going Synergy's way. Then IS-4 has to peak, surely. Someone has to get a reset, and there it comes in. So let's just take the tone down a little bit here as Pat is able to shrug off a one shot going in towards his tracks, and Bratty has actually moved up here as well. The cap is still underway, and those two offending tanks must be damaged in the next 15 seconds. Otherwise, it's going to be good night, Molly. Failware is still set up in the corner. He's not even trying to splash here as well. I guess the E100 is going to protect them high off from any H damage coming his way. 10 seconds left. Things must happen now for Connect Abroad. They're being pressured. Now they need to step up. Failware gets the shot, though. Nice little reset. He'll slow things up a little bit, but they're going to continue making this one happen here. And it might be some sort of flank off the kill. Yes, on Mighty Artur in the bat chat, he could do some real work here. But will it be Dreamlight, his focus, or someone else? Crux also getting around the corner. Paddy actually uh, peeked there to try and make sure that that FTB didn't have any shells. And the Mighty Artur will probably have to find it, but... Big peak by Crux gets taken down, Careless. Uh, not good. Not good at all. And that's why the 50Bs moved into that position in the first place. Bratty, though, comes around the side. And maybe if he hits a shot, he'll be able to do some damage. But he's a little bit late on that one here. Being uh, taken down quite low, but still able to do a fair bit of damage. Mihailov wants to take him out. He won't be able to yet. An FV should easily push on towards that uh, Waffentrager, though. And he does. Mirsky takes him down. But Artur, what a massive flank that was from him. They've stopped the cap. They've reset the game state. And Synergy only ahead by about 500 hit points but they do have the 250Bs to work with here, and Failware is still taking damage like it's going out of fashion. Yeah, the, nobody in that MX3090 actually has to try and do some damage here because he's really not being able to perform for his team, and now you can see Synergy starting to push in, really going for the uh, pincer maneuver, and it's four versus three right now, and KB got so close, and I have no idea why, for instance, Krug peaked around that corner yeah. in the FPT-1 fight, considering a mighty Artur could have always got the reset, and yeah, I mean, that's the only thing that's going for them right now, is the fact that Synergy only have 2 minutes and uh, 12 seconds left to try and take 3,111 hit points off KB. So KB needs to be sparing with the way they use their resources to get resets, but this is interesting here. Hellfish will be caught out. He's going to get pushed onto by most of these tanks, and that's pretty smart from Synergy here. However, if Amadi Artur can get some side shots at all, and he'll be able to really make this a little bit harder. A lot of autoloaders here for Kanaka Broad. So once they fired, they, they're pretty much done there. Crespix goes forward. He's going to go for Hellfish as well. Going to get caught in the 1v1. Some side shots towards Crespix. Going to make it a little bit more costly for him. But one more shot. He might actually fall to Hellfish here. No! He just stays alive. But so does Hellfish. Hellfish still gets the finish here. But still, it's just him and nobody. On Mighty Archul went down off screen. Hellfish has one shot. He has just a slither of health. And it's also nobody on the other side of the map who has to try and do something about it. John will push forward here. Hopefully not now because he has no shots, but he knows that Hellfish will shoot him one way or another. He'll take the shot, and he'll be off reload before Hellfish is, and he'll be able to finish him off. Yeah, nobody's really going to have to try and clutch for his team right now. Hellfish is going to go down to John. Easy stuff. And John now a two-shot. Mursky a three-shot. I mean, basically anyone can bounce him in that uh, AMX 3090, and... Yeah, the position is very obvious. He might even be a little too slow yeah, to the too punch. Slow. No, and the Synergy have uh, good capping positions there as well. Um, around the corner, there's actually... Well, they're around the corner, first of all, so GG. But there's also a lot of hulls there as well, or just on that seven line. So he knows he's screwed. He can't do anything about it. And Synergy will get their second round here, but they definitely would have wanted more, Oliver. Yeah. Over both their MAC picks, picks, they've only got two out of four rounds here. And obviously, after Connect Abroad with such a strong showing to kick things off with, they go 4-2 up into their map of choice. Yeah, they did. And uh, I mean, I think that round even, you know, I think KB should have won it. I think Synergy played it really cleverly with the fact that they just slowed it down in the middle. You know, they took down Crooks. They knew they basically had won the game in the FT-15B. Yeah. Full HP, pushes around the corner, gets tracked. I mean, obviously, you know, you're going to reverse and take another damage because that Pike knows that big old nose going from the front of that tank. And, uh, you know, my Arta was on the hill. The Batch Chat was always going to have that reset on the E100 or the, yep. or the AMX 1390. So, yeah, that was really bad. And, you know, there was a very close point there. But then you had Failware charging into the middle of the IS-4. 
And the 50B is coming off reload. They took him down very quickly. There was another 50B, I think, there from KB or a Waffentrager. Also got taken down. And Novi was just a little bit too far off to get the reset in the end. And, you know, even if he got one reset, still, I think Synergy would have been able to pick up that round. It, the staggered push idea on the attacking side on this map generally works really well. I mean, you push with your main force off the hill. And once you engage and once you start to cap, you get your two 50Bs in the south, go straight down the eight line. More often than not, they'll catch an enemy team trying to use that D line to actually try and flank around. But or they can just catch out Crux. Crux got absolutely wrecked. As I said, he's either the beast or he's, well, I mean, beauty and beast, I guess, but uh, it really depends on which way you want to put it. Either way, girls with makeup and high heels probably aren't great at piloting tanks. And that's the problem, I guess, for Crux in this one. Definitely didn't work out for him. He's either uh, a centerpiece or a liability. And we'll see Crespix as well. Very strong from him. I mean, those 250Bs really carry synergy through. They. I guess were the uh, they're very much the centre of the strategy here for KB. Exactly. Synergy. Yeah, I mean those two really did manage to pull their weight in this one, and uh, you can see nobody probably should have done a lot more in that round. I think in that middle area of the round where the Amex 3090 was the one giving um, KB that five out of four situation, like he should have been in trying to take down some tanks, at least been a, a you know. Something else in a red line snipe, you know, just peek around the corners of the MX-1390 and uh, it's not going to work out for you. Got to be a thorn on the side, try and put some aggression in there. But still, Ruinberg's next and uh, Synergy going to be on the defensive side. So this could at least be their round um, on this so. one. That could be a 4-3 a a situation and you know, they could start creep their way back into this game as uh, KB goes on the attack. I mean, they'd need to get a winning round of Ruinberg to get themselves out of this one, but... You know what? They put themselves in this position, to be fair. So, uh, big ask for Synergy now, but after a decent Himmelsdorf showing, stealing that round away, they're well and truly in this one. And they start on the defensive side. Definitely a bonus for them here as Kanaka brought historically. Haven't been known to be the best attacking side on uh, Ruhlenberg, if I'm not mistaken, Ollie. As they will have to come out with something a little bit special on a map that we definitely consider to be slanted more towards the defenders. Triple IS3 from KB, and we've seen that before. And uh, Dreamlike's actually going to be there, maybe peeking a little bit too aggressively if it's found out, but he also spots that uh, main push up from KB. Uh, the thing is, this I-7 push has worked. I think Wombats used it once, and um, they managed to That's bounce scary. a lot of shells across, but uh, it really depends how many angles KB come from. Well, uh, it depends how many angles I guess they get shot from as well. They're looking for Dreamlike, but they're getting shot from multiple sides here. Dreamlike, well, that's the first salvo out from the IS-7s, and well, we see Hellfish drop down first. Dreamlike still lives, but he needs to get a reload on. Armadi Archur taking a poop load of damage, and Failware is in no man's land. He probably hopes to use Artur's uh, hull to survive, but he gets absolutely wrecked, and at least Kanekabrod don't waste time and, and uh, you know, work around on a crappy strategy that uh, doesn't work out even though they spend 10 minutes on it, so that's all right. Nobody goes up against Dreamlike here, uh, but he's also being shot as well from someone else, if I'm not mistaken. If someone's hammering him and Dreamlike gets the finish, very, very average from Knack Abroad. They crumble much like their namesakes, but maybe they just wanted to get this one out of the way. Well, they tried to. I mean, at the end of the day, it's better just to try a tactic like this than just to kind of play it a little bit more slowly on Ruinberg. Uh, the Triple I-7s obviously got horribly caught out by Dreamlike. He even managed to survive because a couple of misses and that long reload and uh, the bad accuracy. So, I mean, it's an interesting tactic. Distract the north, distracting that southern side. Send your heavy tanks into the north. Get a cap underway. But Dreamlike was a great, uh, a great substitute to that one. So it's going to be game over. Very quick round indeed. Only a couple of minutes long. Since you pick it up on the defensive side, bring it to a four-three, and now KB get to uh, get a chance to defend. Yeah, and I think they'll be happy with that one here as well. Probably not dissatisfied with the five-three scoreline. They still get all three points, and it was Ruhlenberg in the mix there as well. So I mean, they picked it to be fair. Yeah. So you pick Ruhlenberg, and then you have a strategy. They Clearly, they had a strategy, but it definitely didn't work out the way they planned it to, I think. I mean, the thing is, when you're playing Ruhlenberg, you're like, yeah, we should win the defensive side. But then you're kind of scared or oh, apprehensive that the other team just brings something really unusual or gets really lucky at the beginning. And suddenly, you know, your plan of being able to get into a position where you're winning the match or going on match point or winning the tiebreaker, tie whatever, is uh, put into disrepute. So I think that's the position I'll be in as KB. And, you know, Synergy have started to play better tanks. I mean, we have, we've said that before about them. They get better towards the end of that, uh, towards the end of the matches in that kind of four, fifth, sixth round. Yep. And uh, that's where KB has to be a little bit scared. So, yeah, I mean, I think right now, if KB doesn't win this next round, I think Synergy is going to be able to um, walk away with a tiebreaker. So, um, yeah, that would be bad news for them. That would be pretty awkward as well. So we have to hope that that won't actually be the case. Crespix again. Honestly, I like him a lot. I think he's an excellent player. He sits up the top there as well with a good slew of damage. 
Crux actually uh, doing well for his team on that particular round, getting managing to squeeze out a fair bit of damage despite being chunked down very, very early on. So uh, we'll have to see now, of course, uh, what is going to happen of towards this next map, or this next round, should I say, an attacking synergy on Ruinberg. I'm unconvinced, Ollie. I don't really know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I think uh, we haven't really get to, we haven't really got to see their lineup yet. Um, looking at KB's lineup, we'll get to see in a second. Looks pretty average. Um, ooh, that's going to be interesting. Um, see if they stick to that one. But uh, I don't want to spoil it for you guys. But it should be pretty juicy. unusual. That's pretty juicy. Yeah, I mean something we haven't seen this season or any season or anything. Maybe in Clam Wars, we haven't Spoilers. seen it that many times before. But yeah, I think looking at that lineup, uh, anything can happen. A uh, completely new tactic um, from the team. And yeah, it's been locked in. Alrighty, well, we're going to see those tank picks in a few moments for you guys as we do head in towards this game. And it's all on the line here, really, for Synergy. They'd love a win here, but Connectabot looked to be trying to take it away. Yes, dude, we were talking about the T95 the other day. I'm like, I want a team to bust this one out, and here we go. They're going to go for it, and it is... Uh, Oh, well, it's not a pretty tank. I mean, it's pretty in its own kind of way, I suppose. We've got the observers to show you that one as we rolled out. But, Ollie, what are the characteristics of this T95 and where are we going to be seeing it used? Well, just the strongest tank in the game. I mean, maybe with a T110E3 from the front. But also, it's, it's tier 9, so you don't have to pick, you know, so many uh, Let's go, boys. tier points. It's being rammed by Mirloff in the T30, so... When you're being rammed by a T30, by the way, you know you're slow. And it's also... No, but it's being it's going hull down, the T30. The T30 is now in a hull down position because it's a tall tank. Ah. So you have the T30, which has got 300, 298 millimeters of uh, frontal armor. You've got 300 millimeters armor on the front. They're both... I mean, they both got the same. And um, both tanks can do 750 average so ouch a wall of destruction and impenetrable kind of reminds me of the way that the roman soldiers used to pull up the shields and just poke the spears out in that tortoise formation here it's not a tortoise tank of course although it looks kind of similar to it in some ways it's just weird it's just a weird tank i like it though a lot i like that little duo but nobody already taking a fair bit of damage early on is mihailov and happy bubble with their inexorable march towards the middle of the map and no one can really stop them, although they are going to take corners. the next 12 years to actually get in position. So once that happens, we might see something interesting. Now, Kinecoprod actually don't have any control of this village here, which I think could be quite risky, but look at this strategy, Ollie. <laughs> They're going to get behind these two. They're flanking through the city. Oh, this is so risky. This could be really, no, this could be really nasty. How long does it take for a T95 to turn around 180? Uh, it takes a long time, but I mean, how much damage is the fe 15 bs going to get taken? I mean, the fe 15 bs are so much more important than that T95. But still, the uh, TVP is going to come in as well. And Happy Bubble's going to get melted away. And the T30's already fallen. Fail West still has half his health as well. And I'd say that's a win for Connectorport, at least so far. The centerpiece is the most critical tanks for Synergy here. Falling away. And again, just as Connectorport tried, Synergy's strategy doesn't seem to be working out at all. Why weren't Synergy more aggressive in that position? I see they were maybe scared about T the T54 lightweight of nobody. But I mean, they could have just pushed into that right side of the village, shot down and towards the middle. I mean, it's such easy shots and there's bush there as well so you can stay on spotted instead they were slow they were cautious and uh, they allowed the flank to come in from behind the t30 went down the t95 went down and uh, even dreamlike received a, a crippling amount of damage as crespix tries to go right i mean you can see the hp now firmly in favor of kb seven tanks alive versus five and um, yeah they got the higher ground and uh, synergy have the better positions but it's a numbers game, and uh, KB have all the numbers. Well, who are they going to cap with? <laughs> I mean, like, they, they have all the, the spots you want to have, right? No doubt about it, but they have no tank to cap with, so they're, they're just going to sit there and do not a lot. As Lily Pavlou just got completely deleted from the game. I'm surprised he even has a login next time he tries to get on. John now is only a couple shots from being taken down as well. He does at least manage to pick up nobody, but uh, he's about to become that himself, I think. His shots looking to pick him up and connect abroad should be having a very comfortable win here and a very comfortable series victory after synergy gave him a couple scares here but kb had just been far too consistent i feel it's a mark of a good team when you can you know counter a tactic that's very specific and hasn't been seen before very effectively like that they were just about quickly enough around the corner they played it patiently sticking with the 113 and you know the tvps could have just been uh, away and ahead against that one uh, t95 and t30 but instead they stood uh, st stuck together and uh, they knew that they needed the 113 damage and hp to play around with now i mean kb is obviously going to win this one and it looks like they're making their way to the pre-playoffs. Well, it looks like they are going to get themselves set up there. I mean, there are multiple ways that the ladder could end up by the end of the day. 
but KB will probably be in with a shot at the finals. And to be fair, Ollie, I definitely think they've got it in them here. Dreamlike will fall in a few moments himself. He's just really wasting time, and Connect Broad know exactly where he is. A very convincing victory after a little bit of a couple shaky rounds there. Connect Broad get it done regardless. A good, solid 5-3 result, and some very good taste from KB. I've got to say, I'm really impressed with their attacking side strats. Mm. Blown me away. Yeah, I think on steps, their attacking side strat was really good. Himmelsdorf as well. Really good stuff from them. Some mistakes for sure um, on on a couple of those maps. And um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, KB they they played well. They had a good set of strategies they wanted to utilize. They played well when they had to adapt and uh, be a little bit versatile. And you can't argue with that. I think they were the better team. I think everyone could see that. Synergy started to work their way into the game towards the end. You know, on Himmelsdorf, which is definitely one of their maps they liked. They did well on steps. Uh, but I think we could all see after the first couple of rounds that was always going to be KB's game. I think so. They're just a little bit too convincing. And, uh, get, you know, stealing rounds away from Synergy on Synergy's maps is always going to be a good sign as well. Melly, I mean, the voting as it did go back and forth, never really changed much from the 70-30 here. But KB, just a solid performance. The Kakabrod's going up in chat as well. Plenty of Kappa Pride usage as well. Plenty of happy fans as well. Absolutely. I mean, the Knackerbrot, Knackerbrot, sorry, um, fans are very off on you, vocal. My bad pronunciation. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. You even said something very different, which I'm you, not going yeah, to repeat. But yes, Knackerbrot. Yeah. Knackerbrot. 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 Ah, I'm going to go with the first one. I like the first one better. Knackerbrot. That's what it I tastes like anyway. Uh, what? Well, yeah, whatever. it tastes like cack. No. <laughs> Behave. The English stream is fun. Behave. People, <laughs> thank you for getting involved and thank you for voting. The vote stopped at 72%, so still at that 70% marker. And of course, in favor of Knäckebrot. And um, as already mentioned, um, a lot of people at home were predicting a 5-4 ending in favor of Knäckebrot, of course. But we did have a lot of 5-3 votings as well. So very well done. The next vote is already up. So head over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash WGLEU and get your next try for your bonus code, maybe, because three fastest predictors, well, the correct predictions, will win a bonus code containing a premium tank, some gold, some premium days, and a garage slot, of course. And, um, yeah, I mean, the first match already was great, so... Absolutely. And Connect Broad uh, secure themselves at least sixth position, right? They're in fifth now. In, in the unlikely occurrence that Kaz and beat one bats on tanks and get all three points this week, which honestly I think is unlikely right now as much as I like the guys, they will have sixth place. So mm. they're still in there. They've done well. They deserved, I think, a great breakout season from Connect Broad. You really can't fault them on that one. It's been a pleasure to be having them play for our enjoyment. But, of course, more enjoyment on the way, of course, is going to be Penta versus Rusty Roster after the break, guys. So strap yourselves in for that one. That also is a match with some very, very important implications. We'll tell you all about it when we return.